Hey, John here. I got a couple of bolts and some nuts. These are metric M3 bolts. And you can see that the nuts are these DIN 982 nylock nuts. I'm gonna use them to connect two pieces of 3D printed material together. And I need to find the size of the hole and a way to put the nut in to a countersink. So the general dimensions, if you just grab a cheap caliper and look at the M3 bolt, we're looking at about 2.9 millimeters in diameter. The nut is about 5.48 millimeters from flat to flat surface on the hexagonal shape. If you rotate the nut a little bit so that the points hit the caliper blade, you're at about 6.14 millimeters. So uh, the idea I have is I'm going to simply just make you know two flat uh, pieces of material with a hole in it to accommodate that uh, the bolt and on the nut side I want to make a countersink that's hexagonal shape. Now before we proceed we got to consider the print quality that we're going to get with our nozzle and our chosen layer height that we're going to deposit the film down on. The bigger the print nozzle and the higher the layer height the less precision we're going to get in printing. It'll probably bleed into the uh, cylinder hole and the hex uh, countersink so we might have to over uh, uh, oversize them a little bit to make sure that the parts fit inside. Uh, so to that end, we don't need to actually model the two pieces. We're not verifying that bolts hold pieces together. We know that's true. So let's get rid of this and make it into one single thing. We I can just throw, uh, well, actually, let's make this five millimeters thick and move it down minus 0.25, which will put the... Um, the uh, slab why didn't that move it down oh, minus 0.25 how about 2.5 learning how to type is always you know the hardest part of these things okay so here's the bore hole which is this cylinder here that i marked with the red thingy there so there's my bore hole and i'm testing it with a three diameter three millimeter let's call that one whoops m3 bore equals three M3 uh, nut equals um, 6 point, uh, let's go up a little bit to 6.2. Neither of these are going to work that small. I happen to know that for sure with PETG blobbing into this hole. So I'm going to have to, you know, round these up a little bit uh, by the time this is done. I'm sure that will be the case. So, so how do we do this? Uh, there's my uh, simulant to the two slabs smushed together. Here is the borehole for the um, for the for the bolt. Let's put these where they belong. Save. Now, how do we put a hex uh, hexagonal thing in there? Um, okay, so here's how I do it. I go union. What I do is I put a squished sphere, as you could see in the diagram of the one of the test products uh, scale. Sphere uh, R equals say ten, and uh, I smash it down in the z axis one by one by point say four. So what happens is this puts a blob on there, uh, and it's you know at zero, so it's actually sticking down inside of this shape as well. But we don't really care about that. So there's the bore hole. Uh, through the for the bolt to go through this let me turn that back on so we can see what's going on there there's this cylinder here that makes that bore hole now all we need to do is make another one uh, with the uh, bigger size bore hole for the nut don't center this one okay uh, centering it makes it centered in uh, around the origin so this, you can see the red guy here goes both up and down we do not want the nut countersink to go south of the axis here so I, that's why I remove that let's go ahead and remove this thing so now oh, that's M3 bore I don't want that one the nut which would be bigger so now there's a bore hole for the nut and a nut would probably go in there but that's not fun we want to say, give me six facets. So now what will happen is when I put the nut in here, it'll hold on to it. So when I'm tightening up my bolt over here, I don't have to reach around and get uh, pliers and hold on to the nut. This will make it very uh, easy 
much simpler. Plus, this thing here, depending on how you build your your, your object, this bore uh, the countersink for the nut could be very deep inside something. You know, you could just push the nut down with a I don't know, uh, you know, the bolt itself or some other rod to ram it way down inside there and then come in here with a small bolt uh, that reaches in just enough to grab onto the nut and tighten it up. So this has all kinds of nifty uh, uh, benefits from doing things this way. All right, so here is your, well, basically your text fixture. Now just try a bunch of different sizes. Now the one that you saw in that picture was about the right size, and it was a 3.4 and a 6.6, .6, I think. So uh, you can see these just grew ever so slightly when I saved it with these new settings. Um, this is because, I mean, look at how much we're off, right? So 6.15 or whatever it was for the nut from this point to this point. And that is, by the way, how the diameter works on a cylinder. If you raise this to, say, 20, you can see that's the case, right? You can clearly see the outer diameter here. When you come back to uh, 6 faces what you're doing is losing it in here so in other words the, the 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 diameter is not on the short axis it's on this longer distance here from the point to point all right so again experience uh and and this is why you do these things just try a bunch of different sizes 6.8 6.9 6.2 see if the nut wants to go down there in in the um uh, in the countersink and whether or not your bolt can fit through this hole uh it's surprising uh, how much, how difficult it is if the if the if the hole is ever so slightly too small, how hard it is to thread the bolt through there. And so here's a test print of the dimensions that I just did. Uh, I shrank the base down a little bit to save some material and time while printing it out. Here's what it looks like when I slip the nut in there. It looks like it fits pretty nice, went in very well, and it kind of held ever so slightly onto it. Again, your mileage may vary depending on your nozzle thickness or the kind of filament you use and things like that, however accurate your printer is. And the bolt that slides in from the other end grabs on to the threads to clamp it down. So there you go. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if there's a better way to do this. Uh, it seems easy enough. Uh, it'd be nice to uh, not have to actually print test cases out, but I'm not sure if there's a simpler way to do that. Or maybe somebody's already started putting a database for these sort of things together. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye.